Nashville, Tennessee, home to music royalty, including three sons of a traveling preacher man and their cousin, who went on to become Kings of Leon. Your father was a preacher. Um, you, did, uh, you did a lot of uh, traveling around uh, as a kid. Mm -hmm. yeah, it was great. One of the best times of my life. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you, were going from, you were going from what, town to town? And what would you be doing? Like, we were in a car, but I would always sit in the middle because everyone would go to sleep, but except for me and my dad. Right, OK. And so I'd always lean up, and me and him would listen to music or listen to football on the radio or preachers. He would put on a tape of a preacher. Do you have fond memories of those times? Yeah, absolutely. All of them. I mean, I slept a lot under the pews, but while I was awake, I remember all of it. <laughs> there was no TV. Wow. There was no uh, rock and roll. I really didn't listen to rock and roll or anything, really. It's pretty much just like gospel songs. It was a little bit boring. <laughs> <laughs> I've always loved being on the road. It's uh -huh. always been my thing. I, kn I knew, I didn't know what it was I was gonna do, but I knew it would involve the road. I think it uh, definitely made it easy for us to make the transition from just being normal guys to guys that are on the road. Uh, did you contemplate becoming a preacher yourself? Oh, uh, yeah, that yeah, stage? yeah, oh, yeah. Still do. <laughs> When did it kind of change then? When did you, you settle here in Nashville? Uh, when did that, that take place? Well, we were actually um, painting houses in Oklahoma. We were sitting in the parking lot. I look, and there's a thing to sign up for the military. And I was looking at it really hard, and I was like, I think I'm going to do it. You know? Really? I, I was just fed up with where my life was going. I was like, I think I'm going to sign up. Kill the lights and five, is that cool to you? Yeah, a couple. And as God is my witness, it was like, it was like on Field of Dreams, uh, when it was like, like, if you build it, he will come. Right, OK. Something said, write a song. The Kings of Leon. And that night, I went home, and I said, hey, boys, I'm going back to Tennessee. And then a couple months after that, Nathan moved back home. And we were at my grandma's house, and he came over and said, hey, man, let's go write a song. And I was like, what do you mean? We don't even play instruments. He said, it don't matter. Me and Nathan, we wrote one song that was really good, but it talked about sex and drugs and stuff. And Nashville didn't really have room for that kind of stuff. You know, you could write about being drunk, but you couldn't write a song about cocaine. And it was just like, well, I think we're going to write the way we want to write. And in doing so, that meant no one was going to sing it, so we had to sing it. We signed a record deal, and the label said, well, we have these band members that we think will be great. And we were like, Actually, our little brother and our cousin are going to be in the band. And they were like, do they play? And we're like, I don't know. Don't hurt <laughs> None of us played good, so I really shouldn't have worried that much. Uh, and of course, you know, Gerald's like uh, 14 at this time. Is he 15 mm -hmm. years old? Uh, he's 14. I mean, I kind of like showed them the cooler side of rock and roll. He introduced me to the Pixies, the Cure. Every day, we were just like, wow. He had, in a way, created what it was that we sounded like. Jared was like, man, you got to like, get us for playing a lot and like, you know, come down here and like play with us. So I was like, all right, cool. I'll just I'll go check it out. And I didn't come back. This place right here, the first photos that anyone ever saw of us were taken in this place. And what are your memories of doing your kind of first big photo shoot? We took the pictures here, and I had a big beard, and we landed in London, and um, no one recognized me because I had shaved it to just a mustache and this. We went and we played our gigs, and it was amazing. And then we went back home, finished the record, came back to the UK, and when I landed, everyone had a mustache in this. <laughs> everyone looked like me. The power of the facial hair. I actually went into a bar, and I was up at the bar trying to buy a beer, and some guy came up to me and said, what are you, some Kings of Leon wannabe? <laughs> no way. I swear to God. I looked at him and I said, yep. I am. <laughs> you know, Never told him. I just walked away. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't spell it? You didn't, no, you couldn't. No. I suppose you couldn't. I am. Why? What a, he was yeah. a In the middle of recording our record, six songs in, they were like, you have to go to the UK. We're like, why? It's like, because your EP has blown up. If we hadn't been big in the UK, we would have gotten dropped from our label after the first record, I'm sure. Look, look I'm leaving. <laughs> Did you guys that, get that? That was good. We got that in the... Yeah. yeah.
We landed in the UK, and five minutes into the ride from the airport, red morning light came on. We pulled the car over, and we were all dancing, and got back in the car and driving away, and then they changed it to another station, red morning light was on. Changed it to another station, red morning light was on. And you were off to do a, a little gig uh, in High Wycombe. Yeah. A, 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 little, a little strip pub. That was awesome. High Wycombe, the White Horse. The White Horse. That was a uh, strip joint by day and a pub slash venue by night. I remember our dressing room was where they did the private dances. So when we walked in, um, it smelled like lotion. Like, <laughs> like a lot of really strong lotion. The smell of that dressing room <laughs> will haunt my memories until the day I die. I just almost puked oh, smelling, but like remembering what that place smelled like. I'm looking for something. How old are you at the point when you go, go to the White Horse? I, I think just turned 16. Were you worried that they're, oh my God, there's naked women everywhere? Or was it like, uh, God, yes? It was definitely like, God, yes. It was actually the first time that I ever felt famous in my life. It was the first time I felt like the Rolling Stones or something. I know yeah. it's funny and it's naive now looking back, but it was completely packed with people. The people were falling on the stage. It was so packed. Wow. And hit me in the mouth of the microphone and stuff like that. And it was just like, we loved it. When we saw the look in people's eyes, we were like, I think this might work. I think we might be able to play in other strip clubs for the rest of our lives. <laughs> um, what was I, I wanted to ask, something I really wanted to ask you. About, about... 12 inches. Yeah? Yeah, is that what we're talking? Different? Well, a different question. Is it? No, I mean, no, I oh, mean, if, bad, you wanna talk, if you want to talk penis size. Like, no, no. I mean, we want to get a beer somewhere. God bless this town. I've been kicked out of this bar. I've been thrown out of a lot of bars here. Hey. Went to take a leak, and the guy came in and was watching me piss, and I was like, what are you doing? He said, I know you're here to do cocaine. I'm like, I don't do cocaine. What are you talking about? Like, this was after I quit doing it. Yeah. Anyway, I was like, all right, yeah, I guess if you want to stay here and watch me piss, you can, but. This is the strip of heartbreak right here. To see people out here thinking that they've, uh, they finally made it and then they realize they didn't. But look at this, man. This is nothing but cowboy bars. There are more bad decisions made in this strip than the rest of the world. <laughs> the thing that keeps us humble is living in a place like Nashville where the real stars of this town play country music. Yeah. So when we're walking around, it's kind of like, oh, there's the guy from Kings of Leon. But they don't really care. Sorry, I'm just trying to put some of this away. I'm yeah, a real cool. clean freak. I'm like, I'm, I'm yeah. sorry. Really? As you can see, I just took that over there and placed yeah. the label out and everything. Totally. You should see my fridge. I keep it. It's, do you have the labels facing forward? And Always. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. Ah, oh, a man after my own heart. Totally. And I swear to God, that's not just for you guys but at all. Do you mind if I, how, how could you possibly let, let that, I mean, I've had people, there you go. Right, I've had people messing around with my Oh, boy. oh God. Um, you're not pregnant, are you? <laughs> God bless you, my friend. Cheers, Cheers everyone. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, God. You guys want to do another one? <laughs> Load them up. That's good, right? It's great. Yeah, it's absolutely lovely, actually. I was just... <laughs> Let's talk about when things got really messy. Is there a particular tour? Is there a particular night? For me, uh, the wildest time of my life was halfway through my sophomore year of high school until about 2006. 2002 to 2006, I barely remember. We all just kind of went crazy. Yeah, we definitely did our fair share of... Uh partying and debauchery. For a month, we did a tour in Australia uh, at the Big Day Out, and on the tour was us, The Strokes, Metallica, The Darkness, Jet, Dandy Warhols. Oh, they mean, don't make kidneys like that anymore, do they? No. <laughs> we did some crazy things, but uh, probably don't remember the worst thing we did. <laughs> More drinks than ever, like staying up until noon, honestly, and then we would go play golf. And I remember, like, Caleb and Albert 
Hammond from The Strokes like walk down to the lobby to go play golf and Albert was wearing his hotel slippers. <laughs> <laughs> we were going to like one of the nicest courses in Australia. <laughs> Me and Nathan would wake up about three o'clock. We had a four o'clock sound check. We'd go sound check, five o'clock dinner. We'd go drink two bottles of wine, come back, drink another bottle of wine before we went on stage, take a bunch of drink another bottle of wine on stage, come off, start drinking tequila, and do this. It became so routine that, you know, it's not fun doing something that, can, that you can do every day. Any band that can kind of hang up there hard party in shoes with an average age of 24. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say you've done, you've done quite a bit of living. I've never thought about, about it like that. When you're performing, do your minds ever wonder? Definitely, I'll yeah, think about cool. like, what I'm gonna do after the show and stuff. You gotta like try to like snap out of it. <laughs> right. Because like sometimes you can daydream for an entire song. Sometimes Absolutely. you can daydream for an entire show and you're like, oh my God. Yeah, sometimes I, I come we're too here. and it's like, yeah. what have I been playing? Really? I hope yeah. it was okay. What, so you kind yeah. of just have it those are usually the shows yeah, that you walk on, people are like, dude, best. Like, yeah. me and Caleb had a show in Los Angeles, or we all played a show and <laughs> After it was over, I was there. Nice of you to invite the other guys. Yes, it was nice. It was nice caring about Well, they definitely but weren't there. We read the, the way we the were next there. day, and it was like all this like praise, and me and him have no recollection of one single song. Really? Zero. But is this well, was this a, a drink-related incident, or was this just you zoning out? It was just a lot, a lot of things. A lot of fun. Yeah. A mixture. A lot of a lot of fun. Drugs kind of came came into the writing of songs in a different way when you uh, you had to be on prescription drugs because you'd uh, damaged your shoulder. Yeah, yeah. I took a wall oh. on a shoulder, and and for three years, uh, my shoulder would come out of socket. Sometimes I'd grab the TV and try to fall away from it, and it would pop in place. Blimey. It's, it's gnarly. Yeah, yeah. But I went to the doctor, and he said, I don't want you to touch a guitar for at least nine months. He knew I was going to do it. I pulled my cast off, and the first song I wrote, because I could only move my arm this far, was Sex on Fire. I went That's why it's so high up on the neck of the guitar, because that's the only thing I could touch. Wow. And I wrote that and um, okay, and that. used somebody, because it was up high on the neck, too. Two massive tunes And Notion. <laughs> the song like Sex on Fire was written as kind of a joke. It was a funny song. Then people from the UK label came and said, I want that to be your first single. And I was like, are you kidding me? Like, really, that's gonna be the first single? I thought that Sex on Fire would be would be a big song. I could just see it on the radio, hear it on the radio. So yeah. It's a beautiful, beautiful show. <laughs> Thanks. But now, I have more fun playing that song than I do probably any other song. Right, OK. Because now I, I get it. When I see grown men out there telling me that my sex is on fire, <laughs> it's like, that is <laughs> awesome. <laughs> or anytime there's a little kid, I always tell them I say, socks on fire. Like, your socks are on fire. <laughs> What's this interestingly decorated place? This is uh, 12th and Porter. This is where all the old drunks used to play, and we I used to come watch shows here, and I can remember the first time we went on stage here. It was one of the most nerve-wracking moments of my life. Um, before we even had Jared and Matt in the band, we played here. Wow, I was a, as a duo. Me and Nathan Me came and up Nathan. here with an acoustic guitar and a tambourine. Right there, I've thrown up. Right there. <laughs> there it is. From nerves, not from being drunk. But at the end of the day, you've got great tunes. And that's my, as a fan, that's how I I've would never, look I've it, as never a fan. I've never ever written a song that I thought someone would like, ever. Oh, really? I've only written songs that I think I like, and when I think that other people will like it, I think it probably shouldn't be on the record. And that's when it ends up being a hit. With the new record coming out, has that changed? Never, never will that happen, I don't think. I mean, there are songs that I always am so proud of. There are a couple on here that I think will end up going down as some of the best songs on the album. Pyro, which I think will end up being a single. But the whole song, if you listen to the lyrics, it's about yeah. burning everything that stands in the way. Playing new songs live is what it's all about. It just makes the shows fun again. It makes you nervous again, you know? Like yeah. It gives you that feeling that you, you, know, you only feel when you're playing new stuff. <laughs> 